Hello friends, this is the fourth part in our video series on critical reasoning for GMAT. We will begin with the first question. Wolves generally avoid human settlements. For this reason, domestic sheep, though essentially easy prey for wolves, are not usually attacked by them. In Hallensia, prior to 1910, farmers nevertheless lost considerable number of sheep to wolves each year. Attributing this to the large number of wool, uh, number for wolves, in 1910, the government began offering rewards to hunters for killing wolves. From 1910 to 1915, large number of wolves were killed. Yet, wolves' attack on sheep increased significantly. Which of the following, if true, most to helps to explain the increase in wolf attacks on sheep? Let's look at each option one by one. A says populations of deer and other wild animals that the wolves typically prey on increased significantly in numbers from 1910 to 1915. Now, this does not explain the finding that sheep attack increased, so A option is ruled out. B says prior to 1910 there were no legal restrictions in Hallensia on the hunting for of wolves. So again this is irrelevant. So B is also ruled out. C says after 1910 hunters sh shot the uh, shot and wounded a substantial number of wolves, thereby uh, greatly diminishing these wolves' ability to prey on wild animals. These wild animals may have increased in number or activity there, uh, after wolves were shot down. So these uh, wild animals in turn may have attacked sheep, explains the finding that sheep attacks increase. So C is our answers. <coughs> Let's look at other options as well. D. Domestic sheep are incre significantly less able than most uh, wild animals to defend uh, themselves against wolf attacks. This doesn't explain why the attacks increase, so D option is also ruled out. E says the systematic hunting of wolves encouraged by the program drove many wolves in Hallensia to migrate to remote mountain areas uninhabited by humans. So sheep attacks should decrease. And uh, this doesn't explain the increase. So E option is also ruled out. Thus our answer is C. Let's move on to the second question. Among people who experience migraine headaches, some experience uh, with what doctors call common migraines, uh, whereas uh, other experience classical migraines. Siblings and spouses of common uh, migraine sufferers are, uh, sufferers are themselves twice as likely as the general population to s experience common migraines. Siblings of classical migraine sufferers are four times more likely than the general population to experience classical migraines whereas spouses of classical migraine uh, sufferers are no more likely than the general population to experience such headaches now the information above provides the most support for which of the following hypothesis let's look at each option one by one susceptibility to uh, uh, let's look at b Unmarried adults are uh, more likely to suffer from classical migraines than they are to suffer from common migraines. Now the passage doesn't uh, does not differentiate between unmarried and married uh, adults, so B option is ruled out. C says C says people who do not experience uh, migraine headaches are li unlikely to have spouses who are migraine headache sufferers. Now the passage does not talk about it, so C option is also ruled out. D says children of people who suffer from common migraines are more likely than the general population to experience a common migraine. Again the passage does not uh, say anything about it, so D option is also ruled out. E says between one quarter and one half of the general population suffer from either uh, common or classical migraine headaches. Now there is nothing in the passage uh, from which uh, we can infer this so our option is A. Susceptibility to classical migraines is more dependent on hereditary factors than is susceptibility to common migraines. Thus A is our option. Let's move on to the third question. When a new restaurant Martin's Cafe opened in a river while, uh, last year, many people predicted that business at the Wildflower Inn. Riverwell's 
only other restaurant would suffer from the co uh, competition. Surprisingly, however, in the years since Martin's Cafe opened, the average number of meals per night served at the Wildflower uh, Inn has increased significantly. Which of the following, if true, most helps to explain the increase? Now, A says, unlike the Wildflower Inn, Martin's Cafe serves considerably more meals on weekends than it does on weekdays. This doesn't uh, explain the increase. So A option is ruled out. C says the uh, profit per meal is higher on uh, average for meals served at Martin's Cafe than for those served at the Wildflower Inn. This doesn't uh, again uh, explain the increase. So C option is also ruled out. D says the fl uh, Wildflower Inn is not open on Sundays and hence Riverwell residents who uh, choose not, uh, to dine out then must uh, either eat at Martin's Cafe or to na uh, neighboring towns to eat. This again doesn't uh, explain the increase. So D option is also ruled out. E says a significant proportion of the staff at Martin's Cafe are people who formerly worked at the Wildflower Inn and were hired away by the owner of Martin Cafe. This has nothing to do with the people working at uh, Martin Cafe. So this option is also ruled out. B says most customers of Martin's Cafe had never dined in uh, Riverwild before this restaurant opened and on most days Martin Cafe attract more customers than it can seat. Thus this explain the increase and uh, thus our answer is uh, B. Let's move on to the fourth question. Yeast capable of uh, leave, uh, leavening bread are widespread and in the many centuries during which the ancient Egyptians made uh, uh, only unleavened uh, bread. Such yeast uh, must frequently have uh, been mixed into bread though accidentally. The Egyptians however did not discover leavened bread until about 3000 BC. Their discovery roughly co uh, coincided with the introduction of a wheat variety that were prefer uh, was preferably to various varieties because its uh, edible kernel could be removed from the husk uh, without uh, first toasting the grain. Which of the following if true provides the strongest uh, evidence that the two developments were co uh, causally related? Let's look at each option one by one. A says even after the ancient Egyptians discovered uh, leaven bread and the techniques for reliably uh, reliably producing it were well known unleavened bread uh, continued to be widely consumed now what uh, this doesn't have to do with the question asked so this is completely irrelevant so a option is ruled out b says only when the egyptians uh, stopped the practically practice grain were uh, their stone lined uh, grain toasting pits available for break, uh, baking bread. This only shows uh, extreme case and here this is uh, showing more new info which uh, is out of context so B option is also ruled out. C says heating a wheat kernel destroys its gluten a protein that must be present in order for yeast to le uh, leaven bre bread dough. So this is our correct answer since this explains why the two developments are interrelated. So C is our option. Let's move on to the fifth question. 20 years ago, Balzania put in uh, place regulations requiring operators of surface mines to pay uh, for the reclamation of mined out land. Since then reclamation technology has not improved, yet the average reclamation cost for a surface coal mine being reclaimed today is only $4 per ton of coal that the mine produced. Less than half what it took cost to reclaim surface mine in the years immediately after the regulation took effect. Now which of the following if true most uh, helps to account for the drop in reclamation costs described? 
A says even after Balsania began requiring surface mine operators to pay reclamation costs, coal mines in Balsania continued to be less expensive to operate than uh, coal mines in almost any other country. This uh, doesn't explain uh, the question so this is completely irrelevant B says in the 20 years since the regulation took effect the use of coal as a fuel has declined from the level it was uh, at the, in the previous 20 years now the usage of coal has nothing to do with the reclamation cost so B is also ruled out C says mine operators have generally ceased uh, uh, surface mining in the mountainous areas of Balsania because reclamation costs per ton of coal produced are particularly high for mines in such uh, areas. This is completely opposite and is ruled out. C is also ruled out. Uh, D says even after Balsania began requiring surface mine operators to pay reclamation costs surface mines continued to produce coal at a lower total cost than underground mines. Again this option is ruled out. E says as compared to 20 years ago a greater percentage of the coal mined in Balsania today come from surface mines. This explains why there is a, a decrease in the reclamation cost because now the people have switched to the surface mines. So E is our answer. Six says in the nation of uh, Partoria, large trucks uh, currently account for uh, six percent of miles uh, driven on Partoria's road, but are involved in twelve percent of all highways fatalities. The very largest trucks, uh, those uh, with uh, three trailers, had uh, less than a third of the accident rate of uh, single and double truck uh, trailer trucks. Clearly, therefore, one way for Partoria to reduce highway deaths would be to reduce shippers to increase their use of triple trucks. Now, which of the following, if true, most seriously weaken the argument? Let's look at uh, each option. A says no matter what changes Partoria makes in the regulation of it will have to keep smaller roads of uh, limits to all large trucks. Now this does not weaken the argument as the restriction applies to all large trucks. So A, is all, uh, A option is ruled out. C says very few fatal collisions involving uh, trucks in Partoria are collisions between two trucks. This is completely out of scope. D says uh, in Partoria the safety record of the trucking industry as a whole has improved slightly over the past 10 years. This again is out of scope. E says in Partoria the maximum legal payload uh, for, of a triple trailer truck is less than three times the maximum legal payload of the largest of the single trailer trucks. This does not weaken the argument so E option is also ruled out. B says so far only the best most experienced drivers for Partorian trucking companies have been uh, driving triple trailer trucks. This is the correct option. This suggests that the driver of these uh, drivers are uh, well experienced thus it weakens the argument so B is our uh, answer let's move on to the seventh question every fall crotons J migrate south the J's always join flock of uh, migrating crook beaks with which they share the same number, uh, same summer and winter territories. If a J from the crook beaks, uh, it is accompanying it uh, wanders until it uh, comes across another flock of crook beaks. Clearly, therefore, Crotons J's uh, lack uh, the navigational ability to find their way south on their own. Now, which of the following, if true, most strengthens the argument? A says Crotons J uh, lay their eggs in the nest of crook beaks uh, which breed upon completing their sudden migration. Now the A option weakens the argument instead of strengthening it so A option is ruled out. B says the three species most closely related to crook beaks do not migrate at all. Now this is completely out of scope and nothing has been said about it here. 
so B's option is also ruled out. In the spring, Crotons J migrate not in the company of Tatus or Wobblers. Again, this is out of scope, so C option is also ruled out. D says species other than Crotons J occasionally accompany flocks of migrating crook beaks. I'm sorry, our correct answer here is C, as D doesn't say anything about uh, Crotons uh, J's while E actually weakens the argument. So our answer is C which strengthens the argument. I will stop here. We will have more such videos in our video series on critical reasoning. Thank you.